In this paper, we deal with deep learning based hand pose estimation for hand object interaction cases. A learning based method requires a large number of annotated samples. However, current existing large hand datasets usually only contain clean hand samples because it is difficult to annotate hand object cases. If we use a method trained on clean hand datasets directly on hand object cases, it will of course fail, as we can see in the figure. Therefore, in this paper, our research goal is to explore how to utilize these large existing clean hand datasets to train a system that can also handle hand object interaction cases. The main idea of our method is the augmented autoencoder. This technique was proven to be successful for object estimation in Sondermeyer's work. In essence, this technique is a denoising autoencoder. To train an object pose estimation system that is robust to different background and lighting conditions, artificial noises are added to the clean input. And the autoencoder has to reconstruct the clean input where the artificial noises are removed, resulting in a system that is invariant to the noises. In our paper, we will apply this idea to hand pose estimation with the hand as the main reconstruction target and the object as the noise. Here is an overview of our method. The input data is the point cloud data of the clean hands that is taken from clean hand datasets. Using the clean hand samples, we will augment it to add artificial objects to the hand. The augmented input will be encoded to a low-dimensional latent vector and further decoded with two separate decoders. The pose decoder estimates the hand pose in Cartesian space, which is our main goal. And an auxiliary cloud decoder will reconstruct the clean hand point cloud, which plays the role of the denoising autoencoder. For object augmentation, the object models of ShapeNet are used. We have selected 55 object categories and more than 50,000 different object instances. The augmentation consists of three steps. Firstly, the clean hand points and object surface points are combined or concatenated, where the object pose is randomly sampled around the hand. Secondly, the depth map of combined point cloud is rendered to simulate the depth map from the camera's perspective. In the final step, we convert the depth map back into the point cloud. Taking the augmented hand object point cloud as input, the encoder first compresses the input to a low dimensional latent vector. We use a variational autoencoder, therefore, this latent space is also constrained with the KR Davenger's loss. For the encoder's network, we have used our previous paper's method, the residual permutation equivariant layers. This network takes unordered point cloud as input and can extract complex features. Here are some key features of this network. Firstly, it can take flexible number of input points n, such that we can train and test with a different number of points. Furthermore, it has a residual structure that has many shortcut connections. In total, it consists of 27 layers, therefore complex features can be learned. The network extracts point-wise feature first, then each point's feature will be merged into a global feature using each point's importance term and each point's feature term. From the latent vector, the cloud decoder will reconstruct the clean hand. For this purpose, we have chosen to use FoldingNet for point cloud generation. For reconstruction loss, we use Earth's movement distance and chamfer distance between the reconstructed hand and the clean hand input. These are both well used distance for point cloud reconstruction purpose. The folding net folds n uniformly sampled 2D grid points to an arbitrary shape with two consecutive folding operations. In each folding operation, the sampled grid points coordinates are concatenated with the latent vector and fitted to a five fully connected layers. The final output of the folding net is a point cloud with n points. To decode the hand pose in the Cartesian coordinate, we simply use five fully connected layers. The pose loss function is defined as L2 distance between the estimation and ground truth pose. Notice that both cloud decoder and pose decoder share a common latent vector. 
whereas the Cloud Decoder will help to make the latent space invariant to the input object. In this way, the post estimation performance can be improved. To prove the validity of our ideas, we have performed ablation studies with the swing hand dataset. It is a synthetic dataset that contains both clean hand and hand object samples. The dataset provides RGB and depth frames and contains 9000 clean hand samples and 9000 hand object samples. We divide the dataset with 7000 clean hand samples and 7000 hand object samples for training set and the rest for the testing set. In the first ablation experiment, we mix different proportions of hand object samples to training set to compare the performance of different trained models. We compare four training sets A to D with increasing proportion of hand object samples. The clean hand samples will go through augmentation process and the clean hand reconstruction process. While hand object samples already contains the object, therefore will be not augmented and reconstructed. The performance of these four datasets are shown in this table. Dataset A shows that without any annotated hand object samples in the training set, our strategy already performs reasonably good on hand object test set. Dataset B shows the best performance on the test set, which indicates that in practice, we can utilize large clean hand dataset and mix a small proportion of interacting hand samples, which are expensive to annotate, to achieve robust performance. In the second ablation experiment, we compare our full pipeline with two baselines to show the effectiveness of data augmentation and hand reconstruction approaches. Baseline 1 is our method without object augmentation, thus also without hand reconstruction part. The baseline 2 is our method without the clean hand reconstruction part. The dataset used for this experiment is the dataset B from the previous experiment that contains 75% clean hand samples and 25% hand object interaction samples. As shown both qualitatively on the left figure and also quantitatively on the right side table, our method works better than the two baselines. The table also shows that the result of baselines are even worse on the clean hand datasets. The possible reason for this is that the latent representation in the baseline is implicitly correlated to the mixture of clean hands and hand object samples, rather than the clean hand alone in our augmented autoencoder-based framework. By this result, we demonstrate the effectiveness of augmentation component and the reconstruction component in our method. We compare our method to Miller's method on the Eagle Dexter dataset. Since the Eagle Dexter dataset is only annotated on 3D fingertip positions, we use the fingertip arrows to compare the performance. As shown in the figure, our method outperforms the state-of-the-art method on the test sequences, achieving an average error of 28.7 mm. We also trained our method on the HANS 2017 Challenge dataset, which is a real capture dataset that only contains clean hand samples. Then we tested the trained model on some real captured hand object samples. We show here some of the qualitative results. Note that high quality point cloud reconstruction is not strictly required in our method. This figure shows that the occluded objects are roughly removed after reconstruction, indicating the importance of cloud decoder for the formation of the latent space of the clean hand. In conclusion, Utilizing existing large clean hand datasets, we perform data augmentation to simulate hand object interaction cases. We propose to use variation autoencoder for hand pose estimation using point cloud data. And the idea of augmented autoencoder works where the auxiliary clean hand reconstruction decoder improves the performance of the hand pose estimation. In the future work, we will explore how to make more realistic augmentation with the objects and also consider the collision loss between the hand and object.